All praise to the Most High God. So tonight's topic is called Eat to Live. Tonight's topic is called Eat to Live. That's tonight's topic. All right. Tonight's topic is called Eat to Live. So let's open up with the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 7. You might be wondering, why is he going there? Pay attention, take notes. All right. Genesis 2, verse 7. Let's start there. The book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 7. Go ahead. And the Lord God, for man of the dust of the ground, mm -hmm. and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Now, this is Adam right here. You understand? This is Adam. The Lord created Adam, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Watch this. We coming back here. Give me Second Ezra, chapter 16, verse 61. Second Ezra 16 verse 61. Second Ezra chapter 16 verse 61. Mm -hmm. He made man and put his heart in the midst of the body mm -hmm. and gave him breath, life, and understanding. Read that again. Verse 16, verse 61. Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 61. Mm -hmm. He made man and put his heart in the midst of the body and gave him breath, life, and understanding. So this is what was given to Adam. Adam was given breath, life, and understanding. That's going to be very important later on in the class. So just keep those in mind. He was given breath, which we read in Genesis 2, life, which we read in Genesis 2, and understanding. So that's the part we're going to be dealing with, understanding. Okay? Give me the book of Proverbs, chapter 7, verse 2. Proverbs, chapter 7, and verse 2. Proverbs, chapter 7, verse 2. Go ahead. Keep my commandments and live. Mm -hmm. And my law is the apple of thine eye. And my law is the apple of thine eye. It says, keep my commandments and what? And live. And live. That's why Adam was given the breath of life and he became a living soul. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of 2 Ezra. Give me 2 Ezra chapter 7 verse 46. 2 Ezra chapter 7 verse 46. Adam was given breath, life and understanding. Okay? He was given the commandments so he can have eternal life. You understand? Living forever. He was immortal. You all this, give me that in uh, Wisdom of Solomon 2. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 23. Watch this. He says he was given breath, life, and understanding. This is what was given, furthermore, to just to expound on what we just read. He was given breath, life, and understanding. Okay, read that. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 23. Go ahead. For God created man to be immortal. He did what? And For God created man to be immortal. The most high God, he created man to be immortal. You see that thing? Adam was, was created to be immortal. We was created to be immortal. You see that? Read that again. <coughs> Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 23. Go ahead. For God created man to be immortal mm -hmm. and made him to be an image of his own eternity. You see that thing? He made man to be an image of his own eternity. You understand? To transcend time. But because of sin, all of that was stopped. You understand? Because we pissed the most I got off. We went the hell off. Okay? Read that again, verse 23. Read it again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 23. Read. For God created man to be immortal mm -hmm. and made him to be an image of his own eternity. So now when he created man to be immortal, you know what made Adam immortal? Watch this. Give me Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1, verse 15. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1, verse 15. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1, verse 15. Mm -hmm. For righteousness is immortal. You see that thing? So that's why uh, uh, Adam was made to be immortal because of what? Righteousness made Adam to be immortal. That's how the Lord made Adam. You understand? That's how the Lord made the Alpha Adam and all his descendants to be immortal. How did that happen? Because he was given the breath of life. You understand? That breath of life made him a living soul. He was immortal. 
because of the breath of life that was given unto him. Okay, next verse. Watch this. But ungodly men with mm -hmm. their works and words called it to them. You see that they called death unto them. So we call death unto us. He says, but, un but ungodly men with their works and words called it to them. Go ahead. For when they thought to have it, their friend, when they, they consumed to not. It says, when they thought to have it, their friend, meaning what? Wisdom, immortality. Go ahead. They consumed to not. We consume to not. That's where we're at now. Read on. And made a covenant with it. Death. Read. Because they are worthy to take part with it. You see that thing? Because when we rejected God's commandments, we became mortal. You understand? We became mortal men. But the Lord is bringing us back so we can be immortal once again. Watch this. Give me, give me the book of 2nd Ezra now. Chapter 7 verse 46. 2nd Ezra chapter 7 verse 46. 2nd Ezra chapter 7 verse 46. Read. I answered, I answered then and said, this is my first and last saying, that it had been better not to have given the earth unto Adam. Read. Or else, when it was given him, to have restrained him from sinning. So now, what Ezra is revealing unto us is that the earth was given to Adam. The whole earth was given to, he owned the whole planet. You understand? Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10 verse 1. The whole earth was given to Adam and his descendants after him. You understand? Watch this. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon 10 verse 1. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10 verse 1. Mm -hmm. She preserved the firstborn father of the world that was created alone and he was created him alone. Purposeful. He says she, the she is wisdom that preserved the first form father of the world. That's Adam. That was created alone. That's why it's called Alpha Adam. You understand? Read. And what? And brought him what? And brought him out of his fall. When Adam was brought out of his fall, that's when he was what? That's when the Lord introduced animal sacrifice unto Adam. Because that's after Adam and Eve has sinned. That's what it means when it says, in brought him out of his fall. Go ahead. And gave him power to rule all things. You see that thing? Adam was given power. And gave him power to rule all things. You see that thing? So Adam knew everything. The most High God gave Adam the wisdom. The greatest wisdom that he has, that he gave it to Adam. And his descendants after him. You understand? Watch this. Give me. Go back now to 2nd Ezra chapter 7 verse 46. Second Ezra chapter 7, verse 46. Second Ezra chapter 7, verse 46. Mm -hmm. I answered then and said, This is my first and last saying, that it had been better not to have given the earth unto Adam. Stop right there. Or else. It had been, hold on. He says, It had been better not to have given the earth unto Adam, because the earth was given to Adam. You understand? He was given the whole planet earth. Watch this. Give me the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 9. Okay. Adam was given the earth. The whole earth was given unto him. You understand? Watch this. This is the third day now of creation. Genesis chapter 1 verse 9. Watch this. When Adam was given the earth, remember, go back to 2nd Ezra so we don't lose the thought. 2nd Ezra chapter 16 verse 61. 2nd Ezra chapter 16 verse 61. Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 51. Mm -hmm. He made man and put his heart in the midst of the body and gave him breath, life, and understanding. So Adam was given breath, life, and understanding. That's the part I want to deal with. Adam was not only was he given the breath of life, not only was he given immortality, but he was given understanding of the things that was created. He understood all things. You understand? Hence why he named every bit of God's creation. He gave them the names they got. You understand? Now, read that in Genesis 1. Genesis 1, verse 9. Genesis chapter 1, verse 9. Go ahead. And God said, 
let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place mm -hmm. and let the dry land appear and it was so so now the dry land is now is the lord is clearing things up he's he's making space you understand why for the dry land to appear and it was so go ahead verse 10 come on the sin and god called the dry land earth what did he call and, it and god called the dry land earth and god called the dry land earth remember the whole earth was given to adam you understand? the whole earth was given to adam including the dry land which is also called earth the whole planet is called earth and the dry land also is called earth keep going and gather and the gathering together of the waters called he seas read and god saw that it was good and god saw that it was good keep going verse 11 watch this and god said let mm -hmm. the earth bring forth grass the herb yielding seed and herb and, the, be, and herb, hold on it says let the earth bring forth grass and herb not the herb and herb yielding seed read that again read verse 12 again Genesis chapter 1 verse 11. And verse God 12. said. Was it? Mm, what verse you at? Read verse 11. Genesis chapter 1 verse 11. Mm -hmm. And God said. Let the earth bring forth grass. The herb yielding seed. Go ahead. And the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind. Whose seed is in itself. Upon the earth. And it was so. Now verse 11 is very important. Verse 11. Okay, verse 11, very, very important verse. Read it again, verse 11. Genesis chapter 1, verse 11. Mm -hmm. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, and the herb yielding seed. And the what? And the, and the herb yielding seed. And the herb yielding seeds. Because all the herbs upon this earth, all of them, they've got seeds with them. They've got seeds in them. All the herbs that you see upon this, they all of them they've got seeds. Because they were they 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 have flowers. You understand? During pollination and all of that, those of you that have done biology, yes. So he says the herb yielding seeds. And the what? Keep going. And the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind. Mm -hmm. Whose seed is in itself. Stop right there. Upon Whose seed? Whose seed is what? Whose seed is in itself. So you've got herbs that have got seeds. You've got fruits who've got seeds within themselves. Very important. Keep going. Upon the earth, and it was so. Next verse. Verse 12. Come on. Verse 12. And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after its kind, mm -hmm. and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself of his kind. And God saw that it was good. Notice how he's saying that the herbs, they yielded seed, the fruits, you understand, the fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself. And it was so. It says, it says what? And God saw that it was good. So guess what? Adam understood all of that. He, understood, he had understanding of why the herbs had seeds. He understood why the fruits had seed. He understood, he understood all that. Because the whole earth was given to him. So he understood everything in it. And everything on it. You understand? He understood all of that. He had the wisdom to understand why this particular herb is green. Why does it blossom yellow flowers? Because even the colors, they matter. The color of the fruits and veggies, they all have a purpose. That's the, 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 the color of the beetroot. No, it's important. The color of the cauliflower. It's important to the body. It's not because the Mosai was just bored and say, let me just create colors out here. No. Every color is important of the food you eat because it's associated with this particular mineral that is beneficial for your body. You understand? It's beneficial to healthy cells. Read verse 12 again. Genesis chapter 1 verse 12. Read. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed yielding seed of this kind mm -hmm. and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself of this kind and God saw that it was good and God saw that it was good give me Genesis 2 verse 15 
Genesis chapter 2. You know what? Read Genesis 1 29. We're going to go to the second chapter in a minute. Genesis 1 verse 29. Read that. Genesis. Mm, wait, one. wait, wait, wait. No, no, wait. I'm jumping ahead. Second Ezra 6. Give me second Ezra chapter 6, verse 42. Mm, I'm getting my I'm getting ahead of myself here. Give me Gen give me second Ezra chapter 6, verse 42. Watch this. Second Ezra chapter 6, verse 42. Second Ezra chapter 6, verse 42. Go ahead. Upon the third day, thou didst command that the waters should be gathered in the seventh part of the earth. Mm -hmm. Six parts hast thou dried up and Read. kept them to the intent, to the intent that though that of these, some being planted of God and tilled might serve thee. You see that thing? It says, some being planted of God and tilled might serve thee. Might serve who? Us. So guess what? The, what we read in Genesis 1, verse 9 through 12, these things was created to serve us. You understand? The grass, the herbs, the fruit yielding trees and all of that, they were created for the service of men. Okay? Keep going. For as soon as thy word went forth, the work was made. Read. For immediately there was great and innumerable fruit. You see that thing? And it says, immediately there was great and innumerable fruit. Meaning, guess what? When you think of the fruits that exist upon this earth, they, Esau doesn't know them all because the Lord says they are innumerable. Meaning what? You cannot number them. The amount of fruits that exist upon this earth, Esau doesn't know them all. Simple example. You know, in the Bundus, in Limpopo, there's a lot of wild fruits that we grew up eating and we know which seasons they grow in. Esau don't know nothing about them. You understand? So they are innumerable. You can't number them. And all of which have a purpose. You understand? Like we read when it says in verse 42, when it says, and as of these, some being planted of God and tilled might serve thee. Read verse 44 again. Second Ezra chapter 6, verse 44. Mm -hmm. for, me, for immediately there was great and innumerable fruit. Read. And many and diverse pleasures for the taste. You see that thing? It says, and many and diverse pleasures for the taste. Because these different fruits, they taste differently. Why? Because the specific, these different minerals that exist in all these different fruits, guess what? Based on the mineral it has, is proportional to the taste that it's got. So when you taste a fruit, it tastes a specific way. Yes, the minerals in those fruits. You understand? That's why banana tastes the way that it does, because of the minerals that are in that banana. Orange, it tastes the way that it tastes, and it's got the color that is got because of the minerals that are in the orange. So on and so forth. Okay? Read on. And flowers of unchangeable color. Read. And odors of, one, and, and odors of wonderful smell. Come on. And this was done the third day. You, say, you see that part when it says, and flowers of unchangeable color. I mean, you can't change the flower of, you can't change the color of these flowers because every herb has flowers on it. You understand? Every herb has flowers on it. That's why when you look at these shops, Woolworths, I know Woolworths does it. Uh, Checkers does it. They've got these flowers that they sell that you can eat. But when you really investigate, where do they get these, these flowers? Because a lot of the times you don't think of um, you don't think of a uh, a coriander a coriander herb, you know, having flowers. You don't think of that because you never see it. Whenever you go to the shops, you only see the coriander the way that it, you don't see flowers attached to it. So what Esau does, he separates the flowers from the herb and he sells the flowers as well because he knows they are edible. You're supposed to eat them because they come from the what they come from the 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 coriander the coriander herb. So, which means, and you don't think of, I should eat the flowers. But wait a minute. You eat the herb, but you don't eat the flowers coming from the same herb. You see, that's how he has, that's how, that's how he has uh, brainwashed us and conditioned us. You see that? The reason why I, I honed in on the herb bearing seed and the fruit whose seed is in itself, when you go to the shops, there's, you find seedless grapes, you find, um, 
seedless avocados now. You'll find seedless watermelons and so forth. You understand? So the ones you should go for is the ones that have seeds in them. Because it says, the Lord saw it and it was good. So if it does not have seeds in it, that's not good. Yeah. That's not good. But when you go to the shops, that's what you're going to find. Seedless, everything. So it's very difficult these days to find the, the fruits that have seeds in them. You understand? It's not easy to find those. Okay? Now read verse 44 again and finish it out. Read it again. Second verse 6, verse 44. For immediately there was great there was great and innumerable fruit mm -hmm. and many and diverse pleasures for the taste right. and flowers of unchangeable color and mm -hmm. odors of wonderful smell. And right. this was done the third day. This was done the third day. Now jump back up to verse 42 again. Something I want out of that verse. Second is chapter 6, verse 42. Read. Right. Upon the third day, thou didst command that the waters should be gathered in the seventh part of the earth, six parts hast thou dried up and kept them to the intent that of these, some being planted of God and tilled might serve thee. You see that thing? It says, and tilled might serve thee. Now give me Genesis 2 verse 15. It says, and tilled, somebody has to till these things. We are, watch this. Genesis 2 verse 15. Genesis chapter 2 verse 15. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. That's what we just read. And tilled. To dress it and to keep it. Meaning what? Adam, this earth was made for you. I need you to take care of this thing. Adam was given wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. He was given a job. He was also given a place to stay. You understand? The most that God provided for Adam and his descendants after him. Now, because of what he did with Eve, now we have to what? That's why now when you plant, you understand? When you plant, because why is to have a garden? When you plant, what happens is you would, you would remove the weeds and all of that, make the ground soft and so forth, and then you begin to soften the, the, the ground, and then guess what you are doing? Now you are working it so you can plant. You plant, there's no weeds. Then you start to water it then, you know, the stuff that you've planted, they start to come out, right? As they are coming out, now weeds also pop out. You'll be asking yourself, where do they come from? The Lord is doing that. Now, I'll prove what I'm saying. Give me Genesis 3. Watch this. Genesis chapter 3. Read verse... Read verse 17. Genesis 3 verse 17. Watch this. Genesis chapter 3 verse 17. Mm-hmm. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. Stop right there. Because has, thou hast what? Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. So the, you see what was the Adam's problem? Listening to his woman. It says, Because thou hast listened, hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. What did the Lord do? Next verse, next part of that verse. Go ahead. And has eaten of the tree, mm -hmm. of which I commanded thee, say, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. What did he say? Cursed is the ground for thy sake. He says, because you've done this, you've listened to the voice of your wife instead of listening to my voice. It says what? It says, cursed is the ground for thy sake. Let's see how the Lord is going to curse the ground. Keep going. In sorrow, thou shalt, shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. He says, in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Meaning what? You're going to have to work the land now. It's going to be a lot harder for you to reap the benefits of the land that you are working on. Next verse. Watch this. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. Stop right there. Read that part again. Genesis chapter 3 verse 18. Mm -hmm. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. You see that part right there? Thorns and also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. That's why when you remove the weeds you plant and the stuff that you planted grow out, guess what? Shortly after you see weeds coming out. That's the verse right here in verse 18. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. 
Now it's, 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 it, 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 it starts to become difficult for you to be dealing with the garden now. Because now you have to be what? You have to constantly be removing the weeds out of the, out of the garden. That's a lot of work. And those weeds are very stubborn. You have to keep pulling them out. Thorns and thistles. You understand? Because when, 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 when the garden was, was up and running, because now I have not been planting on the garden now, the point is that now I see there's thorns and thistles coming out from the ground. Before, there was not even there. After the planting and all of that, now thorns are coming out. That's what we're reading here. Is the thorns also and thistles shall eat. You understand? The ground will bring forth to thee. Go ahead. And thou shalt eat the herb of the field. He says, you shall eat the herb of the field. So for you to get to the herb of the field, you need to have worked the ground so many times to make sure that you can even eat the tomato from that, that garden, to eat the herbs from the, those gardens. You see that? Because the Lord is making sure, because during before the sin was committed, when there was no herb, there was no weeds, there was no, there was no weeds, you understand? There wasn't, there was no weeds, there wasn't thistles. But after Adam had sinned, that's exactly what the, the ground brought forth. You see the heaviness of this? That's some heavy stuff right there. Okay, heavy stuff. Now, go back to where it was at. Genesis 2, verse 15. Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. Go ahead. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Meaning what? Adam was given a job. He was given responsibility. You understand? Read on. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. He says, Of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. Remember, Adam was given the earth. So when he says, Of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat, he understood what's supposed to be eaten, what's not supposed to be eaten. The proof of that, give me Genesis 1 29. Read that. Genesis chapter 1, verse 29. Remember, Adam was given life was given breath, life, and understanding. The understanding that Adam had, he understood the virtues of roots. He understand bio, he understand, he understood uh, botany. He understood that. He understood the medicinal purposes, the medicinal chemicals that exist in these plants. He understood all that. You understand? Read that. Genesis 1 verse 29. Genesis chapter 1 verse 29. Go ahead. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, mm -hmm. which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. You see what he's saying? He says, to you it shall be for meat. This right here, that's when the Lord instituted a vegan diet. Verse 29, this is a vegan diet right here. Read verse 29 again. Genesis chapter 1 verse 29. Go ahead. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. To you it shall be for meat. Now watch this. Give me Sirach 38 verse 4. It says, To you it shall be for meat. That's what we ate. We ate the herbs. We ate the fruits and veggies. You understand? Those, those, that was the meat that the Lord commanded. That's the diet that the Lord gave unto us. Watch this. Sirach 38 verse 4. This is the reason why he gave this particular diet unto us. Read that. Sirach 38 verse 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 38 verse 4. Mm -hmm. The Lord has created medicines out of the earth. He did what? The Lord has created medicines out of the earth. The Lord had created medicines out of the earth. So Genesis 129, Sarag is revealing unto us that that actually is medication. That's the medicine that the Lord gave unto us. The diet that was given to us, that's our medication right there. That's what he's saying. Read again. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4. Mm -hmm. The Lord had created medicines out of the earth. Read. And he that is wise will not abhor them. He that is wise, for because in order for you not to abhor them, you need to have the wisdom and understanding of what is the purpose of these herbs. 
What is the purpose of the fruits and the veggies that the Lord gave unto us in Genesis 1 verse 29? Wisdom will have you know why they are the way that they are. Why this particular vitamin is important for you. Why do you need to eat that fruit? Why do you need to eat that vegetable? So on and so forth. Adam had that understanding. You understand? Read that again, verse 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4. The Lord hath created medicines out of the earth, mm -hmm. and he that is wise will not abhor them. Now watch this. He says he created medicines out of the earth. These medicines is the herbs in Genesis 1.29. We understand. The medicines goes into herbs. These herbs are, medic are medicine for us, for our bodies. How the body functions, why it functions the way that it does, you understand? To prevent sickness. So these medicines, these herbs, is to prevent any type of sicknesses that we might catch. Watch this. Give me the book of Psalms 104 verse 14. There's a reason why he created these medicines out of the earth. This is the reason right here. Psalms 104 verse 14. Watch this. Psalms chapter 104 verse 14. Mm -hmm. He caused the grass to grow for the cattle. Mm -hmm. And herb for the service of man. Stop right there. And what? And, he, and herb for the service of man. So these herbs are for the service of man. That's why they was created for this to serve us, for the service of man to make sure that you've got a, you've got you've got I don't know you've got an injury and so forth. Guess what? Our forefathers understood what you're supposed to eat for that injury to go. What are you supposed to eat for your body to heal quickly? The type of foods you must eat in order for that, for that injury, to, for your body to recover. They understood all that. So that's why today when we go to Esau's um, medical, whatever, and all of that, they, they created all these, um, these, these medications with a lot of side effects. Because he is not there to, to, to actually heal you. I'll give an example. I'll prove what I'm saying. Give me that in Revelation 13. I'll show you why these medications that he's making, that he's, he's giving to our, for our people, is not for our benefit. Watch this. Revelation chapter 13. Read verse... Read verse 11. Revelation 13 verse 11. Revelation chapter 13 verse 11. Go ahead. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. Mm -hmm. And he had two horns like a lamb. Ray. And he spake as a dragon. He says he had two horns like a lamb and he spake as a dragon. So these two horns, they represent the, the democratic system and the, Republican, the republicanism. Two horns like a lamb, but he spake as a dragon. Meaning what? The way that he does things, right? The way that he does things, it makes it seem like, okay, this medication right here, okay, like for instance, with the sisters, the sisters be dealing with, uh, you know, those pillows that come every month as a reminder of the disobedience. Guess what? Esau said, don't worry, I've got a solution for that. I'm going to give you um, my prodol. My prodol is going to stop all this. You, you see that thing? But... In the long run, what is it doing? Because it's got side effects. Of course it does. It's got side effects. You understand? In the long run, your menstrual cycles are all out of whack. You understand? Irregular bleedings and all that. So on and so forth. Because of these medications that you are taking. So he says what? He says he's got two horns like a lamb. But he spake as a dragon. The medication is supposed to heal you. But in the back of it is that you've got side effects. Those side effects are supposed to destroy you at the same time. You see that? That's what that means. So the medication that the most High God has given unto us, which is the herbs, the fruits and the veggies and so forth, they have no side effects. No, none whatsoever. But Esau's medication, guess what? They have side effects. Okay. And Adam understood that, that all these herbs, you understand, all these fruits and veggies, they are for the service of man, to service man in terms of how man, how man is supposed to, how his body is supposed to function, you understand, 
And those things are his daily things. You understand? Meaning every day when you eat, you are actually making, you are preventing, you are preventing diseases. When you eat every day, depending on what you eat and how much you eat, is what? It contributes to how your body is going to function. You are, prevented, you are preventing diseases to jump on you and to weaken your immune system. You see that? Read that again. Psalms 104. Psalms 104. Go back to Psalms. 104 verse 14. Psalms chapter 104 verse 14. Mm -hmm. He causeth the grass to grow for the cattle mm -hmm. and herb for the service of men. Read. That he may bring forth food out of the earth. You see that thing? So these herbs that are, the, are there for the service of men is food. Is the food. So these herbs, they are for the service of men. You understand? That's that he may bring forth food out of the earth. Because where do they come from? From the earth. You understand? And so you, you ever notice when you buy seeds from the shops and all of that, guess what? When you plant with those seeds, they also contaminated the ground. They contaminate the ground they are planted on based on how these seeds are made now. They contaminate the ground. So now your ground, when you plant the seeds that come from the bundus, because they are not, they, are, they, don't have, they don't have pesticides, they are not genetically modified. You understand? When you take that seed from the bundus, you bring it here. You plant it in an environment where you planted that seed that you bought from pick and pay, that seed is not going to grow. Because the ground is contaminated. You can only plant the seeds that you bought from pick and pay. Yes. You can only plant. And now because these seeds are genetically modified not to be in the fruits that they produce, guess what you must do now? Now you have to go back to pick and pay, buy new seeds. But in the bundus, we don't do that. You plant the fruits that come out, you're going to use the same seeds in those fruits and veggies to replant again when we have to now deal with the farms and all that. Give me that into 2028, verse 48. Okay, this is the reason why Esau is doing this. Deuteronomy 28, verse 48. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Mm -hmm. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee mm -hmm. in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. You see that part right there when it says, and in want of all things, that goes into the seeds too. Because he controls the seeds that you plant in your yard. He controls the seeds that you plant in your farm. And he also controls, because the seeds that you plant, the grass that is, that because the, now they sell grass, isn't it? For the, for the cattle and all of that. Because we used to buy a lot of that at, 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 in, when, I was still, when I was growing up. We used, to, we used to buy a lot of that where there was drought and all of that because we had sinned, we would have to go out, go to these burras and buy like huge packs of grass because he would grow it. Esau would specialize in growing that grass for the cattle, for the sheep, for the goats and so forth. He would do that. So guess what? The, that grass also is, 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 is flushed with, with pesticides and all of that. So the cattle, when they eat that, guess what? Those chemicals, now they go into the cattle. You slaughter the cow, you eat it. Those chemicals goes into your system as well. You see that? So guess what? That's why the Moses has said, keep my commandments and live. And the food that you're going to eat, yes, is contaminated, whether it's fruits and veggies. That's why the Moses had God has commanded us to, the, to must eat moderately. You understand? Because they are packed with all these pesticides and all of that. Okay, now let's go back. Hold on. Okay. Go back to Psalms 104 verse 14. Read that again. Psalms chapter 104 verse 14. Mm -hmm. He causes the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of man that he may bring forth food out of the earth. Now watch this. Give me that. Go back to 2nd Ezra now. 6 verse 44. 
Second Ezra chapter six verse forty four. Let's go back there. Second Ezra chapter six verse forty four. Mm-hmm. For immediately there was great and innumerable fruit, and many and diverse pleasures for the taste. Red. And flowers for of unchangeable color, mm-hmm. and odors of wonderful smell, and this was done the third day. So now Ezra is rehashing the history that you read about in the book of Genesis. Okay, so now watch this. It says what it says, and flowers of unchangeable color. Watch this. Give me second Ezra nine, verse twenty-three. Okay, because Ezra was fasting a lot. Okay, at the command of the Most High. And so there was a time when the Lord commanded Ezra, say, listen, this time I don't want you to fast, but I do want you to detox. Okay, watch this. Give me that in 2nd Ezra 9 now, verse 23. 2nd Ezra chapter 9, verse 23. 2nd Ezra chapter 9, verse 23. Read. Nevertheless, if thou wilt... Sees yet seven days mm-hmm. more, but thou shalt not fast in them. You see what he's saying? He says, If you will see seven days more, but thou shalt not fast in them. We did this a couple of months back, right? We did this. This this particular this detox session. This one. Read that again, verse 23. Second Ezra, chapter 9, verse 23. Go ahead. Nevertheless, if thou wilt cease yet seven days more. But thou shalt not fast in them. But thou shalt not fast in those days. So he's not telling him to fast at this point. Next verse. Go ahead. But go into the field of flowers, Mm -hmm. where no house is builded, and yet only the flowers of the field. And what? And eat only the flowers of the field. Okay, I thought that 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 was a misprint on my Bible. And eat only the flowers of the field. You understand? So it says where no house was built. Because guess what? If the house was built, what is there? You know, chemicals that are used used for uh, cement and, and things of that nature. It says don't go where a house was built before. So go, go somewhere else. In an open field where n- no house was built. You understand? Meaning the ground has not been messed up with. He says, and eat only the flowers of the field. The flowers, the herbs. You understand? Just go on a detox. This is a detox thing here. This is detox. He says, just only eat the flowers of the field. Go ahead. Taste no flesh. Mm -hmm. Drink no wine. Read. But eat flowers only. You see what he's telling him? He says, taste no flesh, drink no wine, but eat flowers only. Just fruits and veggies. Okay, go ahead. And pray unto the highest continually. Read. Then will I come and talk with thee. He says, then after that, I'm going to come and speak with you. Go ahead. So I went my way into the field, which is called Ardeth. Read. Like as he commanded me. Mm -hmm. And there I sat among the flowers. Read. And did eat of the herbs of the field. And the meat of the same satisfied me. You see what he's saying? That's what we read in Genesis 1, 29. You understand? And he says, to you it shall be for meat. He says, it says, and did eat of the herbs of the field, which is what? What we read in Genesis 1, 29. And the meat of the same satisfied me. So he was satisfied with this. Meaning the fruits and the veggies and all of that, they satisfied his, his soul. So the, the most High God commanded Ezra to go on a seven day detox because the reason why seven seven is a is 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 is, is, a, is a day of completion okay like we read in genesis one and all that so the point is as was given a, a was given a command to go and eat the flowers of the field and all of that today they will call it just just have that only don't eat don't have flesh don't have wine none of that just have fruits and veggies at that point so as was told they was given the command to have the same diet that was given to us in Genesis chapter 1, verse 29. Because that diet in Genesis 129, today they call it a detox. Today they call it a vegan diet. But that's the diet that the Lord gave unto us 
to ensure that we what we don't get continual sickness. You understand? That's why the Lord gave us that diet. The meat is introduced into our diet in after Genesis 9, in Genesis 9, after the flood, granted. But what the Lord is commanding us is that, guess what? This is, this, I mean, this is during the time of Persia. This is way after Genesis. The, yet the Lord is commanding Ezra to eat this. Meaning what? It's still just as important because he's telling him, eat no flesh. So does it mean that um, it was unlawful to eat flesh? No, it was lawful. But at this point, the Lord is commanding Ezra to do so. So today in the lands of our captivity, because Ezra was in the land of his captivity. And in the lands of our captivity, give me that in Ezekiel 4 verse 13. Ezekiel chapter 4 verse 13. In the lands of our captivity, we would be eating garbage. Okay? Ezekiel 4 verse 13. Watch this. Ezekiel chapter 4 verse 13. Go ahead. And the Lord said, Even thus shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles, whither I will drive them. You see what he's saying? He says, The children of Israel shall what? Shall eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles, whither I will drive them. That goes back to Deuteronomy 28, verse 48. In want of all things, in thirst, in hunger. You understand? Thirst, hunger. He says what? The stuff that we eat will be contaminated. That's why the most High God has commanded us to what? More veggies, less meat. He's not saying don't eat meat, but more veggies, less meat. Why? Because Genesis 129, Sirach 38 verse 4 tells you, Psalms 104 verse 14 is for the service of man. Medicine to prevent diseases. Because right now the diseases that we be catching, listen, is just some weird stuff going on. Why? The reason why many of our people, they caught the corona the way that they have is because of what? It goes back to the diet, the stuff they eat. They eat fast foods all the time. Nobody thinks of just picking a carrot and just having that in their food. They don't do that. Because in the lokshin, that's what I see. That people don't buy veggies. You can go to the veggie section. You can be sure that you are not going to be, you are not going to find a crowd of people around the veggies and fruits. You're not going to find that. But go to the chocolate section. Okay? Go to the meat section. Our people is there. The fruits and veggies, very few people buy those. Okay? So when the corona hit, many of our people were affected by that because of what? Because of weak immune system. Because of that. All right? Watch this. Give me... Give me the book of second, um, give me Wisdom of Solomon, okay? Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, and verse 17. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 17. Go ahead. For he had given me certain knowledge of the things that are, Mm -hmm. namely to know how the world was made and the operation of the elements. So King Solomon understood how the world was created and the operation of the elements, meaning he understood the basic building blocks. Today they call them the periodic table of elements. You understand how the world is put together. He understood all of that. Even at the molecular, at the atomic level, he understood all of that. Now jump down to verse 20. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 20. Go ahead. The natures of living creatures mm -hmm. and the furies of wild beasts. He understood all of that. Read. The violence of winds. Storms, avalanches. Read. And the reasonings of men. He understood the psychology of men. Go ahead. The diversities and the diversities of plants and the virtues of roots. So King Solomon, this is the part we want to get to. He says the diversities of plants. He understood, he understood botany. Uh, botany, yeah, that's botany, right? He understood, he understood that he says, and the virtues of roots. He understood the, the, the medicines in, those, in the roots of the plants. He understood all of that. If you eat this plant right here, this is what it does to your system. If you eat that, 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 those roots right there, this is what they do to your system. He understood all of that. Guess what? 
The same understanding that Aram had, King Solomon had. You see this? They understood all of that. Today, because we are so destroyed in captivity, we forgot all that. But in the Bundus, our parents, they still do that. My mother, he, she still understands all of that stuff. They still get it. Okay? They still get it. But because of the wickedness of men upon this earth, our people started to use those things for evil things. That's why Buloi entered into the mix. Witchcraft. Using all these, these uh, using the, fruit, the, the roots and all of that, the, the medicines upon this earth, they understood, they started to use them for evil, for evil purposes. You understand? Because we was no longer rolling with the spirit of what? Understanding and the spirit of what? The spirit of wisdom. But we were we was wise to do evil. So it, it was back then, so it is today. Okay? Watch this. Give me, give me the book. Keep going. Keep, read verse 21. We're going to finish that. Read verse 21 now. Verse 21. Mm -hmm. And all such things as either secrets or manifest, them I know. So he understood even the things that was not revealed to everyone. Because the reason why he understood all of that, it was because of this. Give me the book of Second Ezra, okay? Second Ezra chapter 14. Second Ezra chapter 14 and verse 42. Second Ezra chapter 14, verse 42. Watch this. Second Ezra chapter 14, verse 42. Mm -hmm. The highest gave understanding unto the five men and they wrote the wonderful visions of the night that were told Great. which they knew not and they sat 40 days and they wrote in the day and at night they ate bread so now the lord assembled because now as the ezra is rewriting the books because during the time of babylon they banned our records you understand they banned our records during the time of babylon nebuchadnezzar Esau helped him to destroy our records. You understand? So now Ezra prayed to the Lord to, to give, grant him grace to rewrite the books that was destroyed. So that's what's going on here. Go ahead. As for me, I speak in the day and I held not my tongue by night. Because in order for you to see this, you must watch that movie, The Book of Eli. There was a point where at the end of the movie, they will be looking, well, where is this book? And guess what? He had committed that book to memory. Jump up to verse 40. The movie by Denzel Washington, the book of Eli. So everybody was looking for that book, which is the Bible, the scriptures, right? Read verse 40. Watch this. Second Ezra chapter 14, verse 40. Mm -hmm. And I took it and drank. And when I had drunk of it, my heart uttered understanding. Read. And wisdom grew in my breast, mm -hmm. for my spirit strengthened my memory. You see that part right there? For my spirit strengthened my memory. So now guess what? He was committing these things to memory as the Lord was com commanding him and giving them to those five men that was committed to write these books. But the point is, when you watch that movie, you see towards the end of the movie, everybody be looking for the Bible only to find out that whole, the whole Bible was in, was in his memory. He had committed it to memory. So in it is time to rewrite it because it was lost. Everybody was, they could, they did, they could not get access to the Bible. So that whole movie is about actually the history of us when we was under Babylon, when they banned our books. So now Ezra, which Denzel was playing that, that, that role, Ezra now, he says, he called, the Lord strengthened his memory. So there was a man that had to write what he was saying because he asked him also, where's the book? When he came, he, 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 had to give, he had to give him the Bible now. He said, he started speaking in the beginning and that Edomite was writing down what he was saying. They get it from here. Now, read verse 43 now. Read verse 43. Second is chapter 14, verse 43. Go ahead. As for me, I speak in the day and I held not my tongue by night. Go ahead. In 40 days, they wrote 204 books. So in 40 days, they wrote 204 books. So you really got to think about it and say, wait a minute. So this, so many, so many books that was written back then. 
Today we only have 80 books, okay? The old, the new, and the apocryphal. We only have 80 books. But what, what you want to notice is that out of those 204 books, we only have 80 left now. So, which means letting you know that these nations, Esau particularly, because he's the ringleader, they have, they have a lot of information about us. But the Lord had other plans. He commissioned King James to put together the records that we have now so we can come out of captivity. And when we, was, we, when we are with Christ on that day, all of the information that they stole from us, and then some, the Lord will give those things. He will restore everything to us on that day. Go ahead. Verse 45. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass, when the 40 days were fulfilled, that the highest speak, say, the first that thou hast written, publish openly, mm -hmm. that the worthy and unworthy may read it. You see that part right there? It says the first, it says what? It says the first that thou hast written, publish openly. That the worthy and the unworthy may read it. Right? Go ahead. Watch this. But keep the 70 lost. So out of the 204 books, the last 70 was not for everybody. You understand? This is secret records here. Go ahead. But keep the 70 lost, that mm -hmm. thou mayest deliver them only to such as be wise among the people. You see that part right there? It says, deliver those, the 70 ones, the 70 last, that they may, that he said, thou, thou mayest deliver them only to such as be wise among the people. So the wise men, they were the ones that was worthy to receive the 70 last because of the wisdom they had. Go ahead. For in them is the spring of, of understanding, the fountain of wisdom, and the stream of knowledge. You see that thing? Because in these seven, the 70, the wise, he says what? He says, for in them is the spring of understanding and the fountain of wisdom. Meaning what? These are wise men. You understand? And the stream of knowledge. When you read Sirach 24... Okay, watch this. Let's go there now that I called it. Read Sirach 24. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 24 and verse, verse 26. Sirach 24 verse 26. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 24 verse 26. Mm -hmm. He maketh the understanding to abound like Euphrates and as Jordan in the time of the harvest. So now understanding, the, the level, the river of understanding now is being what compared to Euphrates and Jordan in the time of harvest. You understand? Go ahead. He filleth all things with his wisdom. No, no. As what verse my son. Verse 27. No, no. Verse 27. Ecclesiastes 24, verse 27. Read. He maketh the doctrine of knowledge appear as the light mm -hmm. and as Gion in the time of vintage. So verse 26 is telling about understanding. Verse 27 is going into the doctrine of knowledge. That's the commandment. That's wisdom. Okay, watch this. Read on. Verse 28. The first man knew her not perfectly no more shall the last find her out. The last. Let's talk about us now in these last days. Go ahead. For her thoughts are more than the sea. Mm -hmm. And her counsels profounder than great deep. Profounder than the great deep. So he's going into the wisdom. So this wisdom, you understand? This, this wisdom, which is the understanding that will abide like Euphrates. This doctrine that will appear as the light. As Gion in the time of vintage, guess what? That's the type of understanding that those wise men had that the 70 books was delivered unto. You see that? Jump down to verse 30 now. Come on. Verse 30. Mm -hmm. I also came out as a brook from a river and as a coined it into a garden. Read. I said, I will water my best garden and will water abundantly 
my garden bed. That's the, and that's the, the when it says I will water my best garden, let's talk about the garden of Eden. Go ahead. And lo, my book, my brook became a river mm -hmm. and my river became a sea. That's talking about understanding. He's still talking about understanding, but he's using similitudes. Read on. I will yet make doctrine to shine as the morning mm -hmm. and will send forth her light afar off. Meaning for four corners of the earth. Read on. Verse 33. I will yet pour out doctrine as prophecy mm -hmm. and leave it to all ages forever. That's why today we have this wisdom right here. That's why today we have the we, we have the spirit of prophecy, which is the spirit of Christ. You understand? That's why today we have this wisdom this day. Because it says, and leave it to all ages forever. So these 70 men, these, 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 these the, the 70 books was delivered to what? It was delivered to wise men. That's what secret knowledge that only belonged to those that had the spring of understanding. You understand? They had understanding that abounded like Euphrates. They had a lot of understanding. So when King Solomon, go back, because I know some of you forgot already. Wisdom of Solomon 7, verse 21. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 21. Go ahead. And, and all such things as are either secret or manifest, they might know. So he knows the secret wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that was, that was in the book that was delivered to those men. The 70 books. He had, a, he had that understanding. You understand? Watch this. Give me, give me the book of Wisdom of Solomon now, chapter 16, verse 12. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 16, and verse 12. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 16, verse 12. For it was neither herb nor mollifying blister that restored them to health. Mm -hmm. But thy word, O Lord, which healeth all things. So it says, it was neither herb nor mollifying plaster that restored them to health. What you want to notice about this verse, because we read it all the time, right? So in order for the herb or the mollifying plaster to restore you to health, you need to be keeping God's commandments. In the context of the class, you need to know about the dietary law what to eat and how much to eat. That's how, that's when the herb, the mollifying plaster will restore you to health because why? Because you know the word of God that will lead you to the, to, to the dietary law that will teach you what to eat and how much to eat, what not to eat. You see that thing? Watch this. Give me 2nd Ezra chapter 7 verse 69. Second Ezra 7 verse 69. Watch this. Second Ezra chapter 7 verse 69. And being judged, if mm -hmm. he should not forgive them that are cured with his word. Them that are what? If he should not forgive them that are cured with his word. Mm -hmm. And put out the multitude of contentions. So now what you want to notice is it says, if he should not forgive them that are cured with his word. So meaning what? The word of God is a cure. The word of God teaches you what to eat so you can be cured. You see that part right there? Go back to Sarah 38 verse 4. We coming back here. Sarah 38 verse 4. Ecclesiastes 38 verse 4. Go ahead. The Lord hath created militants out of the earth. Mm -hmm. And he that is wise will not abhor them. He says, the Lord created medicines out of the earth. What is the job of medication? Medicine. The medicine is there to what? To heal you. But Esau's medication is not designed to do that. It's designed to give you the illusion of healing. Because if you have pain, they give you medication to numb the pain. But does it mean that the problem is gone? No. The problem still exists. Now, the, the only difference is that you don't feel that the problem is there. So does it cure you? No. Does it heal you? No. But God's medicine, which is the word of God, in the context of the class, diet. The Lord tells you what to eat, what not to eat, so you can be cured with his word. 
understanding the dietary law will what will help to cure or cure you of your illnesses. You see that thing? Read that again. Verse 69. Second is chapter, chapter 7, verse 69. Go ahead. And being judged, if he mm. should not forgive them that are cured with his word, read and puts out the multitude of contentions. You see that thing? It says, when you are cured with the word of God, guess what? You, the multitude of contentions will be blotted out of your spirit. But in order for you to be cured with his word, guess what you must do? You have to apply that which is written. That's how the law, the word of God will cure you. Not numb your pain. No, will cure you. Go back to Sarah 38 verse 4. Ecclesiastes 38 verse 4. Go ahead. The Lord hath created medicines out of the earth. Mm -hmm. And he that is wise will not abhor thee. So a wise man or woman, guess what? They will not hate the medicines that the Lord has created out of the earth because they were created for the service of man, to service you, to service your body, to make sure that you have healthy cells, you have healthy blood, you have your, your blood is healthy, you've got enough oxygen in your blood and so forth, your hormones are not out of whack, so on and so forth. He that is wise will not abhor them. That's, what, that's the point. Now watch this. Give me the book of Revelation chapter 11. No, 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 no. Watch this. Give me first Timothy before I go there. Look, I'm going to touch that in a, in a minute. Give me first Timothy 4. You know what? Mm, no. Give me third John verse 2. I'm going to go to Timothy in a sec. So just remind me of that. Let me just uh, fix my notes here. Give me third John verse 2. Now, this is what I want to deal with. Third John, verse 2. Watch this. Third John, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, mm -hmm. even as thy soul prospereth. Now, read that again, verse 2. Third John, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. So now what you want to see here is that John is commanding us, listen, you, I, 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 he says what? He says, I wish above all things that thou mayest be, thou, that you must, because I don't see what I'm reading, what, what the verse is saying, because the Bible, you know, is old. So let me just open another one. Yes, read that again for me, verse 3, I mean verse 2. Third John, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, mm -hmm. even as thy soul prospereth. It says that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. So this health that he's wishing for all to all the saints, that they may be in, 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 in health, even as their soul is prospering. Because in order for you to make sure that your soul is prospering, hold this, give me the book of Psalms 19 verse 7. This is how you make sure that your soul is prospering. Okay. Psalms 19 verse 7. Watch this. Psalms chapter 19 verse 7. Go ahead. The law of the Lord is perfect, mm -hmm. converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. So the laws of God is what's going to what? Is, is what's going to uh, make sure that your soul prospers because the word, the word of the Most High God is going to change you. It's going to change your thinking. It's going to change your eating habits. It's going to change everything about you. So here it says, even as thy soul prospereth. Because how does your soul prosper? Because prosperity, that goes into what? That goes into joy happiness, peace of mind, you understand? A healthy thought process, a healthy, he, having healthy hormone imbalance and so forth. All of that, that prosperity comes from the laws of the Most High God. God's commandments is going to change your thinking. It's going to change your decision making. You see that thing? Now, go back to where he was at. Third John verse 2 again. Come on.
Come on, Brother Haggai, verse 2. Third John, verse 2, you're on mute. Third John, verse 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, mm -hmm. even as thy soul prospereth. Even as thy soul prospereth. So for your soul to prosper, guess what you must do? You must be converted by the laws of the Most High God. Guess what? That health that you must be in, your physical health is dictated by your mental health. Because if your mind is healthy, your whole body is going to be healthy. Why? Because you are looking after your mind. How do you do that? You allow the laws of God to change your thinking. You, be, you become born again. You apply that which is written. Your mind is going to be healthy. Guess what? Your, your body also will be healthy. You see this thing? Now, watch this. Um, let me share my screen. Okay? Let me share my screen. We're going to read a couple of articles. Okay. Let me share my screen. One second. Okay. Um, okay, can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay, read that. Why you need a hormone detox? No, no, read that right. Come on. Why you need to do a hormone detox? It says, why you need to do a hormone detox? Okay, let's scroll up. Read that. I'm no big fan of the quick fix. If you know me, you know I advocate for making good choices every day, creating sustainable lifestyle shifts that last for a long term. It's an evidence-based, results-driven perspective, and it really works. So now, you, you, so now this, let me see. Mm, Alyssa, so it's a she that wrote this. It's, so she's saying, it says what? It says creating sustainable lifestyle shifts that last for a long term. It's an evidence-based, results-driven perspective, and it really works. Meaning what? Give me that in 1 Samuel 2. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 3. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 3. This is what... Um, this is what this is what is actually going into because if you say you're going to do we need to see it watch this first Samuel chapter 2 verse 3 what she's bringing out here give me that first Samuel 2 first Samuel chapter 2 verse 3 go ahead talk no more so exceeding proudly mm -hmm. let not arrogancy come out of your mouth Read. For the Lord, for the Lord is a God of knowledge, mm -hmm. and by Him actions are weighed. Do you see that part right there? He says, "For the Lord is a God of knowledge." The knowledge we know, according to Malachi two verse seven, is the commandments, and by Him actions are weighed. Now, let's go back to the articles. Um, read the next paragraph. However. I do recommend the right kind of detox at the right time. Mm -hmm. If you are feeling the detox itch after a long summer of a few too many beachside cocktails, backyard barbecues, and vacation mode eating and drinking, then seize that impulse to take, to take better care of yourself and do a hormone detox. And do a hormone detox. The reason why I'm going over this is because all the scriptures that we've been reading, you need to know why you are doing the things that you are doing, okay? Because another thing is that if you want to exercise, you first need to make sure that your health, your diet is on lock. Get your diet together, you understand? Because there's no need of you exercising if your diet is out of work. You understand? So, but... You ha also have to know the reason why you are doing it. You must have understanding, like we read in 2nd Ezra chapter 16, verse 61, Aram was given life, was given breath, life, and understanding. We must get understanding of why we are doing it. Because if you are doing it because you want people to comment on how you look, you understand? For the sisters, for instance, you want men to be oogling you, men commenting on, on the box, you understand? The backside and all of that, you are doing it for the wrong reasons. 
You are not doing it to take care of yourself. You are doing it to do what? Watch this. Give me, give me Isaiah 3. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 16. Watch this. If you are doing it for this reason we're about to read, then you are doing it. You are not doing it for the right reasons. Okay, watch this. Isaiah 3, verse 16. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 16. Go ahead. Moreover, the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion are haughty, Meaning proud, and walk please. with stretch forth necks and wanton mm -hmm. eyes. With stretch forth necks and wanton eyes, like ostriches. You ever seen an ostrich, how it moves? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Read. Walking and mincing as they go. Walking and, and making... mincing. Hold on. Walking and mincing as they go. Meaning the manner in which they walk. Give me that in Sarak. We coming back here. Walking and mincing as they go. Meaning a man may be known by his look. Read that. Sarak chapter 19 verse 29. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 19 verse 29. Go ahead. A man may be known by his look. Mm -hmm. And one that hath understanding by his countenance. When Read. thou meetest him. He says, a man may be known by his look and one that hath understanding by his countenance when thou meetest him. The countenance goes back to Ecclesiastes 8 and 1 when it says, wisdom maketh a, a fa the, man, the, 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 the face of a man to shine. You understand? Go ahead. Verse 30, come on. Come on, verse 30. Verse 30. A man's attire and excessive laughter and gait show what he is. That's why here in it says and gait. Gait is, is a measurement of how somebody walks. They use it in the animal kingdom, in zoology and all that, but it also applies for men on earth. A man's attire and excessive laughter was coming out of their mouth and gait show what he is. Now watch this. Go back to Isaiah 3 verse 16 now. Let's go right back there. Isaiah chapter 3. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 16. Read. Moreover, the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion are haughty mm -hmm. and walk with stretch forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and meeting as they go and making a tinkling with their feet. So now you see that part right there when it says walking and mincing as they go, meaning the way they walk, their walk is to attract whoremongers. You understand? The way they walk, they be shaking their bums. We see it when we go to camp. It says what? And making a tinkling with their feet, meaning what? They do it to get attention. The way they walk, the way they dress, they doing it to get attention from men. So if you are doing it for these reasons that we are reading here, is not going to succeed. You are not going to be successful because you are not doing it to take care of your body. Like we all the scriptures that we went over, you are not doing it to take care of your body. Guess what? It is not going to last. So you have to have a long-term plan and stick with it. You understand? And that plan must be done decently and in order so that the results, guess what? They are directly proportional to the plan and as it is written. You understand? So you must not be doing it because of what? You must not be doing it because of, because of a getting attention like we just read in Isaiah 3.16. Okay? That's why he says, then cease, he says that impulse to take better care of yourself and do a hormone detox. Okay? Read the next paragraph now. Come on. Many health issues including fatigue, acne, acne depression. Acne. Okay, so it says many health issues, including acne, I mean fatigue. Many brothers and sisters, they are fatigued, okay? Acne, pimples on your face and all of that. You know who you is. Keep going. Depression. Depression, and go ahead. Anxiety. Stop right there. Depression, anxiety, okay? Depression, this is a big thing in Israel. Depression, fatigue, depression, and anxiety. This is a big thing in Israel. Go ahead. Brain fog. Mm -hmm. Mood swings. Stop right there. What? Mood swings. Mood swings. Go ahead. 
and weight gain. Weight gain, read. The kind of things that make you want to do a detox in the first place. Read. Are down to too high estrogen levels or a condition we call estrogen dominance. Estro it, says, it says what? Too high estrogen levels or condition we call estrogen dominance. Because estrogen is a hormone that is existing in women. You understand? Read. Estrogen dominance drives the most common hormonal health issues too. From PMS to PCOS. Mm -hmm. Detoxing your body of excess estrogen has many immediate and long-term benefits. So now, because they've got a what? They've got an estrogen overdrive, dominance in their spirit, in their body. So what, what does it cause? It causes fatigue, acne, depression, anxiety, brain fog. Meaning what? Your mind is just fuzzy. The thought process does not make any sense. That's what that brain fog goes into mood swings and weight gain and so forth. But I want to deal with this. PMS is... Um, mm, okay, read the definition of PMS. Read that. PMS or premenstrual syndrome. Mm -hmm. Premenstrual a group syndrome. Of, read. A group of symptoms that occur in women. Mm -hmm. Typically between ovulation and a period. Typically, it says it typically occurs between what ovulation and a period. So that's why today our sisters, they've got a lot of irregularities when it comes to their menstrual cycles because they've got PMS and PCOS. We're going to deal with PCOS in a minute. Go ahead. The cause isn't fully understood, but likely involves changes in hormones during the menstrual cycle. You see that thing changes in hormones during their menstrual cycles because um, some are experiencing high menstrual cycles and they are, they're getting worse every month. Why? Because of the hormone imbalance. Okay, anxiety attacks and all of that, hormone imbalance. It all goes back to the food, what you eat. You understand? Yes, read this, read this part right here when it says premenstrual syndrome, PMS. Read that. Premenstrual syndrome or PMS has a widely has a wide variety of signs and symptoms, mm -hmm. including mood swings, tender breasts, food cravings, fatigue, irritability, and depression. You see that thing right there? So PMS it causes all these symptoms here. Mood swings, tender breasts, food cravings, fatigue, irritability, and depression. Okay, keep going. It's estimated that as many as three of every four menstruating women have experienced some form of premenstrual syndrome. PMS. Now, let's see now. Um, we're going to deal with PCOS. Let's read about that. PCOS. I want to touch on that. There we go. PCOS. We're going to read about that because it is common in uh, among the sisters. Okay, so read that. A visual guide to PCOS. Mm -hmm. Number one, what is it? Read. Polycystic ovary syndrome is a hormonal disorder that affects millions of women. You see that this thing, PC, hold on. This PCOS, it says it affects millions of women. Okay. And the people that are experiencing it the most is Islam. Okay, go ahead. Sometimes it's called stain levant levental syndrome. Levental. Okay, stain levental. So they named this thing up after themselves. Keep going. All bodies need both male and female hormones to work right. But a woman with PCOS has too much of the male kind. Whoa, that's some heavy stuff right there. Read that mm -hmm. part again. All bodies need both male and female hormones to work right. Mm -hmm. but, the but a woman with PCOS has too much of the male kind. You see, so it says women that have PCOS has too much of the male male kind, meaning they have too much male hormones. 
meaning women that want to be men, act like men, behave like men. Yes, they have PCOS. That's some, this is why, because listen, the most I don't play games. Yeah. Go back to where was it? Go back to hmm, Genesis 3.16. Let me show you why these sisters have PCOS. This is the root cause. Genesis 3 verse 16. Read that thing for me. Genesis chapter 3 verse 16. Mm -hmm. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. So thy sorrow. So when it says I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception, the conception goes into, um, you know, child labor pains and all of that, right? The sorrow goes into the menstrual cycles. Those menstrual cramps and all of that, those irregular menstrual bleedings and all, mm -hmm, that's the sorrow is making reference to here. Go ahead. In sorrow, thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Because you do, your desire is not to your husband, and you don't want your husband to rule over you. Guess what? PCOS, the Lord, this is, give me that in Deuteronomy 28, verse 61. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 61. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 61. Mm -hmm. Also, every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. You see that part right there? Also, every sickness and every plague. PCOS is a sickness and it's a plague which is not written in the book of this law, then will the Lord bring upon thee until you are destroyed. So these women issues that the sisters be having and all of that, problems down there and all of that is because of what? Is because of Genesis 3.16. You understand? And if it's getting worse every month, that means something wrong in the spirit. You can't fake it. Okay? Because your body will always tell you whether you are in line with what is written or not. The body will tell you that. Because it says your soul, you must be in health even as your soul prospers. If your soul is prospering because you are allowing the laws of God to convert you, guess what will happen to your physical body? Your physical body will also be in health and it will prosper. It will go hand in hand. So a lot of the times you, you anxiety attacks and all that, headaches, migraines, mood swings and all of that, is because something wrong in the spirit. Yes, you may say, no, I apply and all that, but the, the, what you say does not equal to what's happening to you. So what's happening to you is a direct result, is a direct product of what you are not doing when it comes to the scriptures. Although you can wore, wear a long wavy dress, cover your head and all of that, but guess what? In the spirit, the main problem that you have is what? is listening and applying the instructions that a man that will rule over you will give you that said the Lord. So it doesn't matter how many times you can fake it. I hope you sisters take heed to this thing. Okay. So read that paragraph again. All bodies need what? All bodies need both male and female hormones to work right. Mm -hmm. But women, but a woman with PCOS has too much of the male kind. You see, has too much of the male kind. Give me that in Romans chapter 7, verse 14. So women that are having PCOS, PMS, and all that, guess what? They have too much of the male hormone in them. That's why they act the way they do. Watch this. Romans, Romans 7, verse 14. Romans chapter 7, verse 14. Mm -hmm. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. It says, for we know, we know that the law is spiritual. So when it says, you must be in health, even as your soul prospers, because the law is spiritual. You apply the law, your health physically is going to manifest. But if you are not applying the laws of the Most High God, your health physically, it will also manifest. Your thought process, the way you think, the things you say and all of that, they will also manifest. Why? Because the laws of God is spiritual. You understand? Okay, let's keep going on the article. 
This creates problems with your ovaries. Mm -hmm. You might have irregular periods or no periods. You see that thing? And you might, hold on, you might have, it says this creates problems with your ovaries. That's what we just read in Genesis 3.16. Okay? In sorrow, you, say, you understand? It's a sorrow and thy conception. It says this creates problems with your ovaries. You might have irregular periods or no periods. Go ahead. And, and, could, and you could get cysts in a string of pearls pattern. So the cyst, that's where the term comes from, the PCS, PCOS, that's where it comes, the cyst, you're going to have cysts. It says strings of pearls, string of pearls on your ovaries. So when we scroll up, that's it right there. You see that, that's that picture, that's the uterus right there. Those are your ovaries. And then you've got those, uh, those glowy uh, things looking like pearls and all of that. Those are cysts. So these are swells. So your ovaries now, they've got all these cysts. So that's why like a lot of the times when sisters be going through their menstrual and all of that, there's too much pains and all of that. The chances are you've got these cysts on your ovaries. And Esau said, don't worry, I'm going to give you my prodol for this. But the cysts are still there. That's why eventually you end up getting ovarian cancer. Why? Because of what? Lack of application of God's laws. That goes into diet because the diet is very important. You understand? Okay, so read that PCOS. PCOS is also a common cause of infertility. Now that's heavy right there. PCOS is also a common cause of infertility. So you sisters that don't have, that don't have children yet, you better make sure that you take heed to this class. You apply. Okay, when it comes to the diet, those that I've spoken to you already, make sure that you deal with this stuff. Because if you don't, you are running the risk of infertility in the future where you can't conceive. Not because you can't, because, you know, no, because you didn't follow the class that we just coming out. And this class is coming out the second or third time now. We just didn't, de we just did not deal with PCOS. Okay. Now read the next part of that of that article. It says the condition can be what? The condition can't be cured, mm -hmm. but it can be treated. You see what the, you see what Esau is saying? It says the condition can be cured, but it can be treated. That's not what the Lord says. The most irons, give me that. Go back to Second Ezra, chapter seven, verse sixty-nine. Okay, Esau says the condition can be cured, but it can be treated. What does that mean? Now we're going to give you medication that will have a, a whole list of side effects. It will kill you in the process. Okay? Second Ezra, chapter 7, verse 69. Read that. Second Ezra, chapter 7, verse 69. Mm -hmm. And being judge, if he should not forgive them that are cured with his word, mm -hmm. and put out the multitude of contentions. You see that thing? So it says cured with his word. The, law, the, the, the word of the Most High God is going to cure you. You have to apply the dietary law in order for you to reset your hormone imbalance so that it go, go back to how it was. But this is a completely lifestyle, this is a complete lifestyle change. It's not something that you do for seven days. It's not something you do for 40 days. No, that's a life, this is a life, this is a lifestyle change, which requires what? Requires discipline and diligence and consistency. You have to do that. Because sisters, those that have spoken to you, make sure that you go back because you relapsed on this. In the future, it might, there's a high chance it will, in, it will affect your infertility. Yes, it will. If you don't take heed to this. Okay. Okay. Other symptoms. Read that. The article. Come on. I need you to stay with me. Other symptoms, you'll tend to gain weight, especially around the waist, mm -hmm. and have a hard time losing it. You see what the Bible is saying? I mean, not the Bible, but the article says, you'll tend to gain weight, especially around the waist, and have a hard time losing it. Go ahead. 
you'll often grow extra hair or have it have or have thinning hair. So you ever seen those sisters that have like a beard? You ever met those women that have a beard? Yes, it's because of that. PCOS. Mm-hmm. It says you'll often grow extra hair or have thinning hair. Or you guess what? Your hair will thin out. PCOS. These are other symptoms of that. Keep going. You may get acne or dark patches of skin. Mm-hmm. Guess what? Pelvic- Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. It says you may get acne or dark patches of skin. Okay. If the shoe fits, you just put it on. Keep going. Pelvic pain and depression are also possible symptoms. It says pelvic pain and depression are also possible symptoms. This is a big thing, especially among the women. You understand? Keep going. Causes. Let's see how Esau spins this thing. Read that. Causes. Doctors don't know exactly why you get it. But some researchers think high levels of insulin are at the roots of the illness. If you're overweight, your chances of developing it are greater. So you see that part? It's a, some researchers think high levels of insulin, that's sugar, are at the root of the illness. If you're overweight, your chances of developing it are greater. So these are possible causes, but it says they don't know exactly why you get it. Hmm. Go back to Genesis 3.16. We know why they get it. Genesis 3.16. Let's read that. Genesis chapter 3, verse 16. Go ahead. And to the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. He said, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. The reason why today you see sisters having problems with their ovaries, they have problems with caring children, they have problems with conceiving and all of that, is because of this right here, Genesis 3.16. So now the law, the laws of the Most High God is spiritual. That's one of the reasons why they are having this problem. Secondly, diet is also playing a huge role in this thing. You understand? It's playing a huge part. Because guess what? Today, the bourgeoisie, the brothers and the sisters, guess what? They get money, guess where they go? Ocean basket. They eat crab, lobster, and shrimp, calamari, and all of that. So what do you think will happen to you? You're going to get sick. They buy pizza. It's got pork in it and all of that. Because we see it whenever we're at camp and it's month end, our our brothers and sisters, they'll be coming out of Debonairs with boxes of pizza. Huge boxes of pizza. Okay? Huge contributor to this. Some people, they eat for comfort. No, but the scripture is supposed to comfort you. Okay? Keep going. Your genes play a role. Let's read that. Your genes play a role too. Mm -hmm. If your mother or sister has PCOS, you're more likely to have it. Read. Most women are diagnosed in their 20s or 30s. But even girls as young as 11 who haven't gotten their period yet can have it. Now, that's heavy right there. Yo, this is some heavy stuff. But you, sister, seeing this? Hello? Yes, 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 sir. Okay, it says most women are diagnosed in their 20s or 30s, but even girls as young as 11 who haven't gotten their period yet can have it. That's heavy. And this is not a genetic thing, by the way. No, this is not a genetic, it's not transmitted, it's not, a, it's not something that, no, high blood pressure runs in my family. No, such and such. No, no, no. Mm-mm. You see, a lot of the times, Esau will be saying this thing. He'll be saying, no, high blood pressure runs in my family, diabetes runs in my family. Listen, no, that's not the reason. The reason why you would think it runs in your family is because you eat the same things. You understand? You don't eat correctly. You'll be eating unlawful foods. And those unlawful foods, because if one is eating, everybody in the house is eating there. So now the grandmother drops dead because of it. The grandfather drops dead because of it. 
and then the grandchildren, the grandkids or the sons and daughters, they also start to get sick because of that. And the doctor will tell you, no, did your mother die of this thing? You say, yes, yes, you see, it gets transmitted from place to, no, it does not. It's because when unlawful eat foods are eaten, everybody's gonna be eating that. Okay. Let's read the diagnosis. Diagnosis. Mm -hmm. PCOS symptoms affect as many as 5 million women. Right. To be diagnosed, you'll have at least two of these in frequent and irregular periods. You see that thing? To be diagnosed, you know what is infrequent and irregular periods. Go ahead. A high level of specific hormones. Specific hormones that causes mood swings and all that. Read. And more than 12 cysts. And more than 12 cysts. Go ahead. Meaning what? Those grapes on your ovaries. Read. Find a doctor who specializes in it. Mm -hmm. they'll, ask, they'll ask you about your family. You can make this stuff up. He says they'll ask you about your family. Because they will allude to the thing, to the, to the hypothesis, because it's not a fact, it's a hypothesis. Do they allude to the, to the hypothesis that, you know, it runs in your family? No, it doesn't run in your family. It's not genetic. Go ahead. They'll ask about your family. Check your, bod check your body and your ovaries. Read. And take a blood sample. Come on. They'll probably rule out other issues such as thyroid problem first. Hmm, let's see. Okay, read the treatment now. Treatment. You can take medicine to help relieve symptoms. Your doctor may give you birth control pills stop. to regulate. Oh, stop right there. You see that part right there? I want, I want you to see really how this, this, this man Iso moves. He says, you can take medicine to help relieve your symptoms because we read earlier says, there's no cure, but there's a treatment. Your doctor may give you birth control pills to regulate your period. You see that? A lot of our sisters today, they take birth control pills because they went to the doctor. The doctor told them, listen, your, your menstrual periods are irregular and all of that. They are infrequent and so on and so forth. This is what you're going to take. Guess what? We're going to give you birth control pills. Wait. So as, as you are taking those birth control pills, what do you think these young girls are doing? Are they using condoms, which they are not supposed to be having sex, period, but I'm dealing with what they are doing now. They are not using condoms because I'm taking birth control pills every month, okay? And so even if we have sex, we are not protected and so forth, I'm not going to fall pregnant because of what? Birth control pills. I remember a sister. This was many years ago. I was, still, I was still in high school. And that sister was thin. She was a thin, tall sister. What was her name? Pretty. That was her name. She was tall, thin sister. And she started to, now she started to have sex. Okay. You know what she was taking? Birth control pills. Listen, within two or three months, she was huge. Okay. She was big. And I would ask myself, like, what happened? And it was, you know, it was, the, it was, it, it, you know, like, you know, those type of news, they travel fast, what she's taking. It was, it was known that she was taking birth control pills. And that's what they did to her. You see that? Read that part again. Your doctor may what? Your doctor may give you birth control pills to regulate your period or other hormone okay or another hormone occasionally to start your period you see that thing so now iso is going to control and dictate when your period's okay because that's where it's going so now imagine here you are from the time you are 15 years old because that's when they start having not necessarily that's when they start but i'm just used 15 years as a you know that they they'll be having sex so at that age you'll be taking birth control pills right now, what do you think those birth control pills are doing to your ovaries and your reproductive system, how it works, how it functions? What do you think is doing is destroying it. 
you understand, is destroying it. So much so that it will definitely affect what? How you gonna, if you are, if you, when you fall pregnant, it will affect how you carry that baby. It will affect your womb. It affects a whole lot of stuff. You understand? It says, metformin, well, metformin, that's what? Metformin, a diabetes medicine, may lower your male hormone levels. So does the drug uh, spironolactone, adulcatone. You can also try medicated creams and laser treatments to get rid of extra hair. That's why you see these women behaving extra hair on their chin and all that is because of what? Is because of PCOS. All that goes back to what? Submission and healthy diet. Because I know the black woman, you know, you know the Negro, they will always come up with, so which means I'll just focus on the diet. I don't want to submit. Guess what? Because they think they can fool the Mosa. You see, the Mosa is a genius. The Mosa is a genius. Because think about it. You see the story they be telling? They say, no, Adam and Eve, they ate a fruit. No, there's no fruit that will give you wisdom. But guess what? They will stoop down to that level. Yep. Now, let's go back to the original article now. Because we went there to, um, to touch on uh, PCOS, okay? Now, read the next paragraph of that. If you feel the need for a detox, it's likely because your liver is running at a suboptimal level. Mm -hmm. it's, it's overloaded with caffeine, alcohol, pesticides, sugar, etc. Mm. And you are sensing the, a, the need to cleanse. You see what he's saying? So this, 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 um, the, the detox and all of that, it will help to deal with this. He says, because your liver is affected. Okay, toxins, of course, his job is to deal with the toxins and all of that. But if it's overloaded with these things, it's, you're, you're overworking your liver. You understand? Um, read that part. He says, a detox is not... A detox is not a crash diet, juice cleanse, or fast. That won't achieve the, the goals you've set out. Because this thing is not supposed to be a, a quick win thing. No, this is supposed to be a lifestyle change. Genesis 129 is a whole lifestyle change. Go ahead. If you want to feel energized, refreshed, boosted in your body and spirit, as well oh, as lose... A wait, wait, hold on. It says what? Read that part again. If you want to what? If you want to feel energized, mm -hmm. refreshed, boosted in your body and spirit. Stop right there. It says if you want to feel energized, refreshed, boosted in body and spirit. Go back to 3 John verse 2. Go back to 3 John and verse 2. Third John, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. Okay, even I as need thy... you to... Oh, wait, wait. I need to put some power in your reading. Now you are reading wimpy, wimpy. Okay? Put some power in your reading. Come on, bro. Third John, verse 2. Read that again. Third John, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. Read. Even as thy soul prospereth. You see that thing right there? It says you must be in health even as thy soul prospereth. That's what this woman is saying here on this article. It says if you want to feel energized, refreshed, boosted in body and spirit. Because they understand that these two, these two entities, they work hand in hand. Your spirit and your body. You understand? Go back to the article if you want. If you want to feel energized, refreshed, boosted in your body and spirit, as well as lose a few pounds and get glowing skin, mm -hmm. you need nutrients, minerals, and resources to make this happen. Now, that's heavy right there. It says what? If you want to be boosted in body and spirit, as well as lose a few pounds and get glowing skin, you need nutrients, minerals, and resources to make this happen. Okay, those nutrients and minerals, that's what we read in Genesis, the first chapter. Okay, 
what the Lord commanded Ezra in 2 Ezra 9, 23 through 26. Okay? The hormone detox, read that. Hormone detox will have you eating fresh, nourishing food for three meals a day, mm -hmm. plus snacks. Healthy snacks. Go ahead. You won't feel hungry, hangry, or deprived. Read. You will be... You'll be prepping food to start, and Hold then on. you'll be... Wait, wait, wait. You'll be... what? Don't read past that. Read that part again. You will be prepping food to start. Stop right there. How many, how many of you have I spoke to you about this? Many. How many times? Multiple times. Mm. Keep going, because you only believe it when Esau writes it. Keep going, because you don't believe the Bible. Read. You will be prepping food to start and then you will be eating frequently throughout the day. Read. Instead of watching the clock for your next juice. Mm -hmm. The foods you'll be eating will fill you up and support your liver function. You see that thing? You because can your download... liver, Hold on, because your liver, your liver is very important. You understand? A good diet, these fruits and veggies and all of that, they help to cleanse your liver. Because guess what? You are taking medication when you eat these fruits and veggies. That's how the Mosai is a genius. Okay, keep going. Your liver needs the fuel to process the excess hormones and toxins and eliminate them from your body. Mm -hmm. Read. The four day hormone detox is packed full of cleansing foods that address your liver, intestines, and lymphatic system. Because 70%, 70 to 80% of your immune system is actually in your gut. So gut health is very important. 70 to 80% of your immune system is actually in your gut. Okay, go ahead. Your elimination organs, especially your hardworking liver, Mm -hmm. need lots of nutrients and break to break down toxins. You see that part right there? Your, it, says your, your, it says, especially your hard-working liver needs lots of nutrients to break down toxins because it's the one that is responsible for separating the toxins from the things that the body needs. Okay, go ahead. And you get nutrients from food. Mm -hmm. You do not... You do not and will not get enough nutrients from a juice fast or cabbage soup diet for your body to detox. You see that thing? Because what he's saying is, is what? It's a, it's, a, it's a whole lifestyle change. That's the point. You understand? That's why like keeping God's commandments is not something you do on the Sabbath. No, it's a lifestyle. On a daily basis, that's why the Apostle Paul says, I die daily, because daily you must carry that cross. Go ahead. There are so many good reasons to do a hormone detox. Acne, bloating, sore breasts, PMS, funky periods, feeling sluggish, unable to focus, lacking creative juices. But I, but I want to tell Hold you on. how my four-day hormone detox can make you feel. Hold on, wait. Because sometimes wait, 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 the problem wait, 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 isn't wait. enough. Hold on. It says there are so many good reasons to do a hormone detox. Acne, okay, that's one of the problems. Bloating, sore breasts, PMS, funky periods, feeling sluggish, unable to focus. That's brain fog, okay. Lacking creative, creative juices. You see all of this that we're reading here is what, what, what we just read in 3 John. Because you see that part where it says unable to focus? Watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah 26. Okay. Isaiah chapter 26. Isaiah 26 verse, verse uh, I believe it's verse 3. Isaiah 26 and verse 3. Read that. The book of Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3. Read. That would keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, 
because he trusted in thee. You see that part right there? It says, thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. So what does it mean, whose mind, if your mind is stayed on the Lord, you must meditate continually in his commandments. Okay, Sirach 637. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 37. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 37. Read. Let thy mind be upon the ordinances of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And meditate continually in his commandments. Read. He shall establish thine heart and give thee wisdom and thine own desire. You see what the Lord is saying? So in order for your mind to be stayed on the Lord, you have to what? You have to meditate continually in his commandments. You must meditate. Your thought process, your thought process is off. Guess what? An evil thought jumps on your head. You must use the laws of God to combat that thought. That's a daily thing. 24 hours a day, you must be doing that so that your mind can change. Your mind can start to get used, get, get used to this. So those evil thoughts, now they're not gonna have, they're not gonna be so much, they're not gonna be so dominant in your spirit. Okay, watch this. Hmm. Give me, give me the book of Ephesians. Okay, give me Ephesians real quick. Let me see if that's what I want. Ephesians. No, not Ephesians. I don't want Ephesians. I believe what I want is. Yes, I want Ephesians. Give me Ephesians 4. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse. Start at verse 21. Ephesians 4, 21. Read there. The book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 21. You know what? If... Mm. No, no. You know what? No, no. Just jump down to the point. Read verse 23 for me. The book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse, verse 23. Go ahead. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. You see that part right there? When it says whose mind is stayed on thee, guess what? In order for your mind to be stayed on the Lord, to meditate continually in his commandments, guess what? This is what needs to happen. You must be renewed in the spirit of your mind because your mind is a spirit. If, you, if your, mind be, your mind being that being a spirit is not converted, guess what? You are not going to be in perfect health. You are not go, your soul is not going to prosper. It will not prosper if your mind is not renewed. It says you must be renewed in the spirit of your mind. How you do that? Next verse. Go ahead. And that ye put on the new man. Mm -hmm. After God is created in righteousness and true holiness. You see that thing? It says, and ye put on the new man, which is after God. You see that thing? That's how you get renewed in the spirit of your mind. You must put on this new man. This new man that the Lord will, give, will bring unto you in your spirit, when you get converted and subdue your own understanding, like it says in 2 Corinthians 14, verse 34. You understand? That's what it means right there. You must put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So that new man is after the most high, created in righteousness. Now watch this. Give me Romans 7, verse 25. Romans chapter 7, verse 25. This is how you make sure that your mind is stayed on the Lord. So what we're reading here, in order for you what to get rid of that brain fog that we read about in the article, unable to focus and all of that, watch this. Romans 7 verse 25. Read that. The book of Romans chapter 7 verse 25. Go ahead. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Mm. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. Stop right there. That's but, heavy. This is a, hold on. This is a heavy verse right here. It says, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's what we just read in the prayer in First Chronicles 16 verse 8 down. It says, praise the most high. Watch this. It says, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. You see what you're supposed to serve the most high God? Your mind is created. This new mind, he says, you must be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That new mind that you've got, guess what you do with it? You serve the most high God. You serve the laws of God with that mind. 
with that new mind, you will serve the laws of God with that new mind. Next part of that verse. Go ahead. But with the flesh, the law of sin. But with your flesh, you're going to serve the law of sin, which is what? Which is what? Fornication, uncleanness. You understand? Not eating correctly and so forth. That's what's going to happen. It says, but with the flesh, the law of sin, death, meaning you're going to get death, brain fog. Okay? Your soul is not going to prosper because your mind is not renewed. So your body also is not going to be renewed if your mind is not renewed. Okay? Now, let's go back to the article. Let me see if there's still some more I want out of that. Um, oh, yes. Of course. Let's go back to the article. Let me share my screen real quick. All right. Yes, sir. Okay. So now, read that. Why you need to do a hormone detox? This is the benefits of doing that. We're just going to read the, the, the highlighted ones, the ones, the ones in bold. We, we're going to read that. Read that. Why you need to do a hormone detox? Uh -huh. Your skin will glow. You see, that's the first thing. That's the first benefit. It says your skin will glow. Okay. Hmm. Maybe we must just read a couple of it. Read it. During the four days of a hormone detox, during the four days of the hormone detox, you will eliminate entirely all the central adult and hormone acne triggers like dairy, soy, mm -hmm. caffeine, sugar, and gluten. Do you see that thing? Gluten. That, that's what he's saying. He says you will eliminate dairy, soy, caffeine, sugar, and gluten. Keep going. And gluten. Mm -hmm. You also increase the amount of skin clearing. You see that? Oh, you will also increase the amount of skin clearing, meaning your skin will clear. That's why it says your skin will glow. Keep going. Hormone supportive nutrients in your diet. In your what? In your diet. So now this, what we're going over, you're not going to have it. It's not a diet plan that you have because a diet plan has an end. This is a lifestyle change. You understand? In Genesis 1, 20, we was not given a diet plan. We was given a lifestyle. Okay, keep going. Especially the three vital omega-3s and mm -hmm. B vitamins. And B vitamins. Keep going. Excess estrogen and the resulting hormonal imbalance leads to acne by increasing se sebum, sebum. Mm -hmm. by increasing seb sebum production and preventing skin healing. You see that thing? Sebum production prevents skin healing. You can do your own research, sisters. Keep going. If you are particularly prone to acne, around your ovulation days or before your period this detox is for you okay let's read the next highlighted part what does it say your mood will soar your mood will soar meaning what that mood those mood swings they will go away keep going if you've been let's just read that first the yeah the first couple of um words there read read on if you've been experiencing anxiety low mood depression Mm -hmm. or just a sluggishness and demotivation. Then this detox will turn that around in four days. Now, now we're not going to do that. Did I read that part when it says the root cause of mood swings? The root cause of mood swings and many female-centric mood problems is destabilized blood sugar. You see that thing? So these mood swings are caused by a destabilized Blood sugar. Hmm. Heavy stuff. Okay, let's read that. Next highlighted part. You will shift your relationship with food. You will shift your relationship with food. Let's see. Mm. With excess, read that. With excess estrogen. With excess estrogen, many women store weight around the middle. Meaning what? Yes, I, their waist. Keep going. For my, for my detox, you will be eating anti-bloat ingredients in your fruit salads and green salads at every meal. Read. Plus, you will be eliminating many sources of weight gain. 
sugar caffeine mm-hmm. so now but what you want to notice here is you see that part when it says for the, for my detox you'll be you'll be uh, you'll be eating anti bloat ingredients in your fruit salads and green salads and all of that listen this this wisdom right here because remember when it says a four day detox whatever you have to pay for this this information that's coming out is free of charge is written in the scriptures you see iso elam they make a lot of money of these diet products they make a lot of money the most high god is using the prophets to bring it free to you okay you be a fool not to apply what is coming out read the next part you will feel you will feel creative and calm you will feel creative and calm hmm. read that next part you will detox more than your body you'll 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 detox more than than your body meaning it's not just your body that you'll be detox but your mind also okay your skin will be fine and all of that let's see let's see hmm. okay that's it on that you see they be providing you see pills it will all go back to no you don't need none of that you just need to apply the commandments that's it the dietary law okay go back to third john verse 2 again third john verse 2 go ahead beloved i wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health mm-hmm. as thy soul prospereth you see that thing he says even as your soul prospers that's why we went through the article we went through our barrage of scriptures to bring that out watch this give me the book of first timothy 4 verse 8 1 timothy chapter 4 verse 8 Come First on. book of Timothy, chapter 4, verse 8. Read. For bodily exercise profited little. You see that part right there? Bodily exercise profited little. He is not saying it does not profit. He says it does profit. That's the point. Bodily exercise profited little, meaning what? There is profit in you exercising. Your body is going to benefit from your exercise that's what he's saying that's why he's saying bodily exercise profited little yes it because it does have profit keep going but godliness is profitable unto all things mm-hmm. having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come and of that which is to come but he says but godliness is profitable unto all things part of that godliness is you exercising because it does profit that's the point okay watch this give me um hmm let's just dial it back a little bit give me second kings chapter 4 verse 38 second kings chapter 4 verse 38 because speaking of the 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 food that we must eat you see our forefathers they understood what to eat what not to eat even the wild foods the wild fruits and veggies that today it seems like iso is this genius who know all, who knows all of this stuff okay give me that in second kings chapter 4 verse 38 read that second book of kings chapter 4 verse 38 go ahead and elisha came again to kilgal read and there was a death and there was a death uh, there was there was a death death meaning famine okay there was a death in the land go ahead and there was a dearth in the land read and the sons of the prophets were sitting before him mm-hmm. and he said unto his servant sit on the great pot and see the pottage for the sons of the prophets you see what he's telling he says listen mm. it says read that last part again what did he say to the to the sons of the prophet and see pottage for the sons of the prophets No no he says set on the great pot and see the pottage for the sons of the so he's telling his servant Gehazi actually keep going verse 39 and one went out into the field to gather herbs to do what to gather herbs so one one of the one of them they went out to what 
they went to the field to gather herbs. Okay, go ahead. And found a wild vine. Wild vine, that goes onto the grapes and all of that because like I say, there's wild grapes that we would eat in the bundus that Iso don't know nothing about. Keep going. And gather the off wild wild goats. Wild goats, his lap full. Keep going. Wild goat, his lap full. Mm -hmm. And came and spread them into the pot of pottage, for they knew them not. You see that thing? So now, because remember, at this point, Elijah is gone. Elisha is performing miracles. The Lord is using Elisha to do mighty works. Okay? So he went to the field and gathered wild vine and wild goats. Let's see what those are. Okay? Let's see what these wild goats are. Let's see. One second. There we go. Let me share my screen real quick so we can see what they are. There it is right there. You see the screen? Yes, sir. So these are wild goats. Okay. This is part of the pumpkin family, actually. You see this? Mm -hmm. This is part of the pumpkin family. Look at them. You see how they look? This is them right here. That's it right there. You see, at home, we would plant this. You know what we call it in Limpopo? We call it Leraga. That's what it's called. This thing right here is called Leraga. We would cook it, right? We would, we would cook it. And while we are cooking it, you put salt in it. So as it is cooking, the salt will seep into, the, into, into this, 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 this vegetable right here. And then once it's done, you just cut it open. You would take the seeds out because they are going to be used for the next planting season. And then you just eat the meat of the, of the goats. You see that? That's what you are looking at here. In different countries, they grow, they have good, they've got different shapes, but it's the same thing. And we would eat the morojo associated with this, with this vegetable right here. When you go to Ekas, they have them. They sell them, Kokas. Okay? Even the morojo that goes with it, because it's got flowers as well. There's flowers that grows out of this. You see this? Beautiful stuff. All praise to the Mosa. All praises to the Lord this day. Okay? These are important for the body. These are the medicines that we read about in Sarak 38. Okay? Watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiasticus. Okay? Chapter 31, verse 16. Because remember, we, we went over 1 Timothy 4, verse 8, that bodily exercise, it profits. Okay? Watch this. Sarak 31, verse 16. Read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 31, verses 16. Go ahead. Eat as it becometh the man. Hold on. Wait. Re read 30, verse 15. Start at verse 14. Sarak 30, verse 14. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 30, verses 14. Go ahead. Better is the poor, being sound and strong of constitution. Read. Than a rich man that is afflicted in his body. Meaning what? Sick. Meaning you must have a sound body and a strong constitution of your body. Guess what? He it says it's better than a rich man that is afflicted in his body. A rich man that is what? Sick. Because you see a lot of that. Go ahead. Health and good state of body are above all gold. Above all the silver that you can collect is as health and good a state of body are above all gold. Above all the money you can make on this earth, the fame you can receive and all of that, but health and good a state of body says is above them all. Go ahead. And a strong body above infinite wealth. You see that thing? You're a strong body above infinite wealth. So not only must you be strong physically, but you must be strong mentally. How do you do that? You keep the commandments. Keep going. There is no riches above a sound body. Mm. And no joy above the joy of the heart. You see that thing, meaning the joy of your mind. Because where does joy come from? Joy comes from your body being healthy. And your body is not going to be healthy if your mind is not healthy. You see, they, 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 they work hand in hand. 
For a healthy body, a healthy body needs a healthy mind. And that's where joy comes from. Keep going. Death is better than a better life or continual sickness. Continual sickness, always in and out of hospital. That's not the, that's not, that's not the life. That's not living. Okay, come on. I mean, look at the, one of the famous men on this earth, Stephen Hawking. He was a scientist, a theoretical physicist. You understand? He wrote a lot of books, but he was uh, afflicted in his body. His fame didn't really change that condition. And, you know, he started to say, no, God doesn't exist. The Lord said, okay, I'm going to show you that I do exist. Boom. Here's a sickness. Nobody going to cure you of this thing. I mean, he was on a wheelchair. Okay. He can't feed himself. He can't go to the bathroom. He can't clothe himself. For saying, no, God don't exist. The Lord said, okay, I'm going to deal with you, Stephen Hawking. You see how he was? He was limp. The type of disease that he had, he had the type of disease where the body, he did not, the, the, the muscles, his muscles didn't have, did not have, could not, the, meaning he was weak in his, in his joints. You understand? His neural pathways were completely messed up. He couldn't send signal from his body to move his leg. That couldn't happen. You see that? Oh, praise to the Lord. Keep going. Verse 17. Death is better than a bitter life. Oh, mm -hmm. continue with sickness. You see that thing? Read. Verse 18. Delicate poor. Okay, that's it. Okay, okay, that's it on that. That's it on that. Let me see. Let me see what I want. Jump down to verse 23. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 30, verse 23. Go ahead. Love thine own soul mm -hmm. and comfort thy heart. Read. Remove sorrow far from thee. This meaning For stress. Sorrow. So this sorrow goes into stress. It says, love thine own soul and comfort thy heart. How do you do that? Romans 15 verse 4 tells you how you comfort your heart. Keep going. And comfort thy heart. Read. Remove sorrow far from thee. For Come sorrow on. has killed many. Mm -hmm. And there is no profit therein. You see, so the Lord is telling you how you make sure that you don't get what? You don't get sick. One of the things, this is now, these are mental things now. It says, love thine own soul and comfort thy heart. The only way for you to love your own soul, give me that in First John 5 and 2. This is how you love your own soul. First John chapter 5, verse 2. Watch this. First book of John, chapter 5, verse 2. Mm -hmm. By this, we know that we love. First book of John, chapter 5, verse 2. By this, we know that we love the children of God. Read. When we love God and keep his commandments. You see that part right there? When it says, love thine own soul, it says, by this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. You see that? So for you to love your own soul, guess what you must be doing? You must love the Lord and keep his commandments. That's how you love your own soul. Because that in Proverbs 8, give me Proverbs 8 now. Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs 8, might be verse 17. I'm shooting from the hip on this one. Okay, Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8 and verse, yes, read that. Proverbs 8, verse 17. The book of Proverbs, chapter 8, verse 17. Mm -hmm. I love them that love me. Read. And those that seek me early shall find me. You see what he's saying? He says, I love them that love me. And those that seek me early shall find me. Read verse 36 now. Watch this. The book of Proverbs, chapter 8, verse 36. Go ahead. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. Mm-hmm. All they that hate me love death. You see that? All they that hate me, they love death. So guess what? For you to love your own soul, you must keep God's commandments. Guess what? When you keep God's commandments, you're going to know how to love your own soul. And comfort thine heart. You comfort your heart. You comfort your mind because your mind is stayed on the Lord. If your mind is stayed on the Lord, that's how your mind is going to be comforted. Because you read in the scriptures 
to know what to do, what not to do. That's comfort, okay? Because the Lord is telling you, listen, in order for you to be okay, this is what you must do. That's why it says, choose life that thou and thy soul, thou and thy seed may live. No, 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 not the mind, not the Negro. The Negro doesn't want to do that. They are like Thomas here. Yeah. They want to see by the, by the death and destruction that come upon them to see that the Lord exists. By that time, it's too late. Okay, go back to where he was at now. Sirach chapter 30 and verse 23 again. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 30 verse 23. Read. Love thine own soul and mm. comfort thy heart. Read. Remove sorrow far from thee. Stop right sorrow. there. Hold on. He says, love thine own soul and comfort thy heart. So we know how to love. Wow, what must you do to love your soul? You keep the commandments of the Most High. He says, and comfort thine heart. Okay, let's read that. Give me that in uh, First Maccabees. Okay. Give me that in First Maccabees real quick. First Maccabees chapter. Hmm. No, I believe what I wear. First Maccabees 12 verse 9. Read that. First book of Maccabees chapter 12 verse 9. Read. Therefore, we also, albeit we need none of these things, mm -hmm. for that we have, for that we have the holy books of Scripture in our hands to comfort us. You see what comforts us? The holy books of Scriptures in our hands to comfort you. The laws of the Most High God. That's how you are going to be comforted, because you know the comfort comes in when you realize that if I do this, this is the judgment. If I, don't, if I do this correctly, this is the reward. If I don't do this, this is the judgment. What will comfort you is knowing that for you to be right with the Lord, you must keep his commandments. For you to piss him off, you reject the commandments and do your own thing. The Lord will pay you a visit. Suddenly, at an instant. Okay? Now, let's go back. Sirach chapter 30, verse 23 again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 30. Verses 23. Read. Love thine own soul and mm -hmm. comfort thy heart. Read. Remove sorrow far from thee. Now, for now some... hold on. I want you to stop right there. It says, love thine own soul. We know what that means now. You keep the laws. Comfort thy heart. You must what? You must keep the, you must study. You study the, the scriptures because that's where you're going to find comfort. And you must not leave the Bible back then. You must bring it to today. That's how you're going to see the comfort. That's, where you, you, that's when you're going to be comforted because you are relating the Bible to today. You understand? It says, remove sorrow far from thee. Wait, wait a minute. So, which means, which means, jump up to verse 21. Let me show you because this sorrow right here is talking about what? Stress, confusion, and all that. Read verse 21. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 30, verse 21. Read. Give not over thy mind to heaviness. Mm, stress. And afflict Read. not thyself in thine own counsel. That's the problem right there. He says, don't afflict your own self. He says, don't afflict thyself in thine own counsel. Meaning what? When you don't listen to counsel, you trust your own mind. Guess what the Lord says? He says, you are afflicting yourself. You know what it means to afflict yourself? Meaning what? You, 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 you go out of your way to destroy your own self because you afflict yourself with your own counsel. Meaning what? Give me Sirach 6. You see, the book of Sirach has got everything. Sirach chapter 6, watch this. Sirach 6 verse 2. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 6 verse 2. Mm -hmm. Extol not thyself in the counsel of thine own heart. Read. That thy soul be not torn in pieces as a bone, string alone. Now that's heavy right there. He's, going, he's saying the same thing. He says, extol not thyself in the counsel of thine own heart, meaning your own mind. Don't trust in your own mind. Your mind is wicked. So if you trust upon it, guess what? You are just bringing death and destruction to yourself. It says, extol not. That's a commandment right there. Thy, he, says, he says, extol not thyself in thine in the counsel of thine own heart, that thy soul, meaning your mind, your spirit, okay, be not torn in pieces as a bowl, string alone. 
Because the minute you go outside of this Bible, you're on your own. That's what he's saying. You are going to be as that bull straying alone. Guess what happened? Satan, guess what? He is like a lion roaring to, to see who he may devour. The minute you go outside of the, the, the safety net of the Bible, you're on your own. Satan got you now. You understand? Go back to Sirach 30. Sirach 30 verse 21. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 30, verse 21. Read. Give not over thy mind to heaviness. Meaning stress. Don't give yourself, don't give your mind to heaviness, meaning stress. The only way you can have that mental distress and confusion, foggy brain, you understand? Not able to focus on all of that is when you afflict yourself with your own counsel. You counsel yourself. You trust upon your own mind. When the scripture tells you what the mind is like, it says the mind is wicked, is desperately wicked. Who can know it? But you're going to trust upon that mind. Keep going. Give not over thy mind to heaviness and Read. afflict not thyself in your own counsel. And don't afflict yourself in your own counsel because when you do that, what is, what is it called? Self-hatred. You hate your own self. Okay. Now jump back down to verse 23 again. The book of Ecclesiastes of 30 verse 23. Mm -hmm. Love thy own soul. Read. And comfort thy heart. Comfort your mind. Remove sorrow far from thee. Mm -hmm. For sorrow has killed many. And there is no profit therein. Meaning there's no profit in sorrow and stress. Because where does the... Because the Lord is telling you where stress comes from. Stress comes from when you don't love your own soul. Stress comes from when you don't comfort your heart. And we have already gone through those. It says remove sorrow far from thee. He's telling you how to remove sorrow from you. You must what? You must love your own soul. You apply God's commandments. You comfort your heart. You study the scriptures so you can find comfort. Okay? In the time of need. Like it says in Hebrews or in Titus. Remove sorrow far from thee. That's how you make sure that sorrow is removed from you. For sorrow hath killed many. Meaning stress has killed many. And there is no profit therein. Next verse. Watch this. Envy and wrath shorten the life. You see that thing? Envy and wrath shorten the life. You have the spirit of envy, wrath. You're, gonna, you're cutting your own life short. Keep going. And carefulness bringeth age before the time. And carefulness bringeth age before the time. Meaning what? You age before it's time for you to age. Because what? Carefulness goes into what? Worrying and stressing out. And where does the stressing out come from? Because you exalting yourself in your own counsel. You are bringing, you are afflicting your own self. Do you understand? Next verse. Watch this. A cheerful and good heart will have mm -hmm. a care of meat and diet. You see that? That's a heavy verse right there. A cheerful and good heart will have a care of his meat and diet. So if you don't care about your meat and your diet, what you eat, how you eat, guess what? You're not going to have a cheerful and a good heart. You're going to have stress, which we read in verse 21. You're going to have sorrow, which we read in verse 23. You're going to have envy and wrath, which we read in verse 24. So the Lord is telling you, it says, if you have a care of your meat and diet, you're going to have a cheerful and a good heart because if you love yourself, you'll eat to live, not live to eat. That's the point. Okay? So, Sarah chapter 31, verse 16. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 31, verse 16. Read. Eat as it becometh the man. Mm -hmm. Those things which are said before thee and devour not, lest thou be hatred. Okay, but what, what do they call umhopolo? Is that what they call it? That's covetousness. The Lord says, don't be covetous upon meat. Keep going. Verse 17. Leave her first for man's sake. Mm -hmm. And be insatiable, lest thou offend. Don't be insatiable, meaning what? Don't have lack of control, lack of self-control. Keep going. When thou sittest among many, reach not thine hand out first of all. When you're sitting among men, he says, don't reach out your hand first of all. Okay? You must leave off for men as sake. Give, keep going. A very little is sufficient for a man well nurtured. 
a very little. This is a very little is sufficient for a man well natured. One thing I will say about this: the nation of Israel, gluttony is the biggest thing in Israel. Okay, gluttony is one of the biggest problems in Israel. Yes, we know the dietary laws and all that, but when it comes to this particular verse right here, we all struggle when it comes to this. But guess what? It's time we do the biggest loser. Okay, read verse 19 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 31, verse 19. Mm -hmm. A very little is sufficient for a man will nurture. Read. And if it is, and if it is not his wind short upon his bed. Let's talk about gas. Keep going. Verse 20. Sound sleep cometh of moderate eating. You see that thing? Sound sleep cometh of moderate eating. So for you to have sound sleep, you must eat. You must have a care of your meat and diet. People behaving nightmares and all of that, having these evil and wicked demonic dreams is because of what? Is because of immoderate eating. It comes from those things. No, I was, I was being chased by this big lechema. No, the reason why that's happening is because of the food. The amount of food you eat. Okay, read verse 20 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 31, verse 20. Mm -hmm. Sound sleep cometh of moderate eating. Read. He rises early. He rises early and his wits are with him. Read. But the pain of watching and collar and, and, the, and pangs of the belly are with an insatiable man. So now he's saying, he says, you see, when you don't eat moderately, he says, what? You're going to have pain of watching, diarrhea, cola, you're going to have stomach cramps and all that, and pangs of the belly. Most of my cramps are with an unsatiable man, meaning what? Not having self-control. That's what he's saying right there, okay? So the key is don't eat to live. You must, li you must don't live to eat, but you must eat to live, okay? I'm going to end the class right there. All praise to the Most High. Uh, let's break bread um, in the honor of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, for laying his life down for the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. First book of Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed to bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had up saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as, oft, for as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 